Okay, welcome back. So let's go with the acid flow. So the way I would, I would go through this is the following. I'll first state on a high level what the function is doing. And I encourage you to spend some time if you have not already to parse this function yourself. And then we will start going through the animation to try to understand the different parts that make this vulnerability what it is. So essentially the function is going to parse the packet record by record. And that's why, that's why we have this attacker controlled loop exit condition because that's the field count. That's that number in the, in the packet I asked you to pay attention to. It. If I remember correctly, it's the AN, AN count value. Now pay attention to this temporary buffer of value NS max label size because this will be the buffer that contains labels. So as I was saying earlier, what will essentially happen is that for each of these records, the code is going to try to copy the resource record, the type and the class into the buffer. If it starts out with the record the, with the resource record itself, and then it goes on to, to copy the type class and other metadata into the buffer. And now let's see how it actually pulls that off. So, First, it obtains the length of the label. As we know, the length of the label should be um, about 63 bytes. We see here that this char buffer is restricted to be 63 bytes, no problem. And in the string copy now, in the following line of code, essentially the code attempts to write that name into the uncompressed pointer, which it does so by validating the length of the available length left in the compressed buffer. And so that it, it basically is trying to not write past the, you know, right past the end of the buffer. So it basically says right up until the amount of size I have left remaining in the buffer, which sounds all right, right? Okay. And then it advances the pointer by U length bytes. So the number of bytes is written and then it puts in a null byte and then it comes down further down here to actually copy in now the rest of that metadata, like the type, the class, the TTL, address length, and all of that stuff. But it does it with a fixed size, and the value of that fixed size is 10 bytes. So on a high level, this looks okay, right? We copy name, we, we have an uncompressed buffer, we copy name up until the maximum size that we think we can copy, then we advance U pointer, and then, interestingly though, we copy a fixed sized pointer, uh, we copy a fixed sized data from attacker controlled input into the buffer. But this kind of really only works if you can guarantee that name is less than this calculation. That, that, means, you add, that means basically at this mem copy, you guarantee that there is still enough space in this buffer for this NS prefix size copy from the packet into the pointer to take place. But what if there isn't, right? Your exploit is sent should be thinking, right? What if the amount the pointer is moved forward is not the amount that was copied? Hmm, interesting. How can this be? Well, let's look at this calculation again. The calculation attempts to find out how much space is left in the buffer, right? So if there is, quote, little space left in the buffer, then what is essentially going to happen is that little amount of data will be copied from name, right? But then the pointer would be advanced an incorrect amount of times. Technically, it should have been advanced by the maximum size it could copy, right? Or some kind of way to determine the appropriate way, the appropriate bytes that were cop that were returned from string, string and copy. I, I believe the return value should be the number of bytes that were copied. So that should have been what should use to advance this pointer but that wasn't the case. So if the pointer was moved right up to the boundary of the buffer, if the current offset is 1024, then if we done the calculation, there would essentially be one byte to copy. If we copy one byte out of name, and name could be potentially be 62 bytes long, then U pointer is advanced 62 bytes when really only one byte was copied into U pointer. Okay, that sounds interesting, but even more so is that first, then when we come down here, 
it is likely that this mem copy would overflow the buffer. All right, we're getting somewhere, but there is still something even more interesting. Now, what if the length of this was, as an example we said earlier, what if it was 62 and if we just one? Then we would advance the pointer an arbitrary 62 bytes into somewhere, right? And then we would then copy this fixed size 10 bytes from attacker control data into this arbitrary location where the pointer is now pointing to. Effectively skipping over many adjacent bytes before doing the mem copy. This is why we have an out of bounds write. Now let's see that in an illustration. So we start with you u len being 56, so we're actually trying to copy a string, a label of about 56 bytes long into the buffer. So this is the buffer here, but the buffer is currently at the end. And then we are trying to write name at this point. If we follow the code, then string and copy would copy only one character, and that one character would be copied in there. Okay, and then next we will put in, do the, do the calculation and now that advances the buffer 56 bytes. So basically skipping all of these memory regions. And then we'll be writing the null byte there. And then the next mem copy operation will write an arbitrary data from the, from the, from the pointer up to up until 10 bytes. And basically we have an a, a arbitrary write primitive. What was the fix? Well, the string and copy field for the, the, the validation of U length was performed and basically proper error logging was you know reported down to the user based on what happened. If you're interested in additional reading, uh check out the references 